Hello Internet, Slip Repeat here with more War in the Pacific. I was really surprised by the response my earlier videos received, and I was delighted anyone watched them at all. Um, those earlier videos were mainly meant to show off how a turn runs, and to a lesser extent, a summary of what level of control a player has. Uh, two things that some people left in the comments, um, the two common things are, they don't know if they could get into such a complicated game, and then the second was, is there any way I can explain things further? So. That's what this is. It's um, this video and others up in the, kind of in the pipeline. There'll be another uh, series of War in the Pacific videos that goes into greater detail in a more tutorial-like manner. And I hope those uh, I hope these videos can help chip away at the complexity bar barrier for anyone who might have bought the game and gave up partway through a campaign. So overall, some of the things I'm planning on doing videos on. Um, it would be describing some of the interface shorthand, um, logistics and their effects, land combat units, uh, beyond assault value, naval organization, and maybe more. Uh, if you have any requests, feel free to comment, um, and I'll add it to my list. However, in this first intermediate concepts video, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about aircraft, because they're the most visible part of the game. <laughs> to provide the usual disclaimer, while I've done well in two general campaigns against the AI now, I'm far from mastering the game, and uh, I have basically no perspective from the Japanese side either. But if anyone wants to chime in in the comments to correct me or to add more detail, free, feel absolutely free to do so. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the first um, first question you might ask um, is, how is the Japanese player flying, or how's my AI opponent flying so many more planes than I am? I mean, what am I doing wrong? And I guess this raises the question, what do you need to fly planes? And there's basically five things. Uh, you need pilots, you need airframes, so the planes themselves, you need proper supply to sort of simulate aviation fuel and ammo and bombs and whatnot, uh, you need maintenance, uh, people to maintain the aircraft, and you need an airfield. So uh, how do you lose some of these things? For pilots, um, it's obviously combat and operations losses. Uh, combat losses are when a plane gets shot down. Operations losses happen, I guess, as a plane's trying to take off or land, and um, you know it gets caught in a storm or something just like a random roll of the dice. It doesn't happen much, but um, it's out there and it can gradually chip away at your uh, squadron. Um, the second thing is airframes. These also can be lost through combat and operations losses. But then we also have pool limitations, and um, I'll explain the aircraft replacement pool a little bit, and probably come back to it later. Um, every turn, a certain number of planes get built. Um, I guess we'll do month to date, sort the table that way. So, at this point in the month, I've gotten 32 B-24Js. Uh, overall, I get about you sum up uh, 38 and 27, so uh, I think it's about 65 or 75, can't do math in my head. Uh, you get that many planes per month of uh, B-24Js. So you have to have some of those in, in your aircraft replacement pool to, uh, to be able to replace losses. Um, the third thing is logistic, or supply and logistics. Uh, first off, a base has to have some supply, or else airplanes can't get maintained, and they can't be armed, they can't fly missions. Now, the second thing is, if you want to get replacement aircraft to uh, to replace your losses, you need to have at least 20,000 supply present at that base. So we see um, this, uh, this Dutch base that I can't pronounce. Um, it's got 76,000 supply, so it's good. Um, but 20,000 is kind of the key point for uh, for getting replacement aircraft. Um, the next thing is maintenance. Uh, you need aviation support units present at the airbase. Um, and carriers kind of count as their own. They can maintain as many aircraft as they carry. So uh, you don't need to worry about that for carriers. But for land-based air, which is kind of what I'm focusing on, uh, you need some aviation support units, and these are provided by things like base forces, um, air wings, and uh, hiding somewhere around here is a headquarters, I think. 
Actually, I know where one headquarters is. That's in Shanghai. That is the 14th U.S. Army Air Force. Um, and when you pop open the, uh, the unit details, you see a unit here called Aviation Support. Um, and headquarters units tend to have a ton of this stuff. Like this, uh, this particular air headquarters has 180 total um, aviation support. And um, so for each plane, you need one point of aviation support. That's the general rule of thumb. Um, once you get up to 250, you can effectively support an infinite number of planes. So uh, don't like stack five or 600 aviation support at one base, even if it's where you're kind of gathering all your squadrons. You just need 250, and then you can spread out the rest to other bases in need. And the final thing you need, it seems really obvious, to, uh, to fly planes is an air base. Um, a lot of these bases are built up. This one isn't. This uh, Binkolin has a air base of size one. Uh, small airfields can't support many groups. You can only support one uh, one group per airbase size. So, like a level four airbase can basically support four groups. Uh, once you get to level nine or above, it's as many as you want. Kind of like that 250 aviation support, um, where once it gets to that size, you know, you can fly as much as you want out of it. There are a few other key points of airfield size, and that is um, you can't fly offensive missions from size 1 airstrips, so all you can do is do, like, I guess, searches and uh, set up combat air patrols. Uh, you can't launch bombing missions, basically, is the thing. Um, once you get to a level 4 airfield, you can basically fly any sort of mission without penalty. Um, I think level 2 and 3 airfields, you can... Uh, fly bombing missions from them, but the bombers flying out of those air bases uh, carry a reduced load. <coughs> so, the next question is, how do I get better planes? Uh, once again, you need, well, you need three things for this. Um, oh, actually, backtracking a bit, how do I replace pilots? Um, so when you open up a air bases um, menu by clicking on the airfield icon, you see this, uh, pilot list here in the table. See num? Anything that's uh, red means you don't have a full set of pilots. To fix that, you just hit get new pilot and that's really all there is to it. There might be a way to, like you can request veterans uh, and you can select what type of pool. Like there's replacement pool, reserve, training command, any. I usually just stick with any because I'm not super optimal on my play yet. Uh, when a group like this one is missing six pilots. Um, you can fill it. Another option up here is get six pilots. There you go. Uh, you can generally tell which ones the new pilots are because their experience and uh, skills are a lot lower than everybody else. But I'll talk about skills a little more later. Okay, so back to how do how do you get better planes? Uh, you need airframes, you need supply, and you need a certain size airbase. Um, I'll talk about airframes last because that's kind of the more complex one. Um, so supply, you need 20,000 supply again, so it's not any higher than just replacing planes normally. So that's that's nice and easy. But for airbase size, you need a level 7 airbase, except, um, which is pretty big, so uh, early in the war, you know, it'd be your capitals like Sydney, some of your major bases like uh, early on Singapore um, and Surabaya and Batavia. But you can build up others to that size. Um, but if you want to, uh, if you don't want to build up a base that long, or that, um, or if you can't build up a base that much, what you can do is put a headquarters unit like this uh, 14th U.S. Army Air Force there. And that'll drive down the, uh, I guess, drive down the requirements for um, what it takes to upgrade. So I think uh, if you have a headquarters unit, you only need like a level four or a level five airbase to uh, to upgrade your your air group. Uh, the third thing you need is airframes in the pool, and um, upgraded planes um, they don't start appearing until a certain date. So let's look at the aircraft replacement pool screen a little bit from the uh, from the intelligence menu. See this uh, note here, avail. Actually, let's uh, take this down to just just the US Navy. I can make a few other points here. 
Um, so a plane doesn't start getting produced at its either replacement or production rate. And the total number produced is replacement plus production rate, once again. Uh, it doesn't start getting produced until this date happens. So, uh, for example, TBF-1 Avengers don't start getting produced until May of 1942. And once that time happens, you get 35 of them a month. Now you notice some of these dates are in red. That means another upgrade's come. And uh, these are no longer being produced. They're being superseded by something else. So scrolling down a bit more, you, there's uh, the TBM-1C Avenger. Those start getting produced in November of 43 at a rate of 110 per month. Um, you might notice sometimes that, uh, especially in the case of Wildcats, um, actually sort by name, um, the F4F3 Wildcats got a maximum speed of 329 miles an hour, and note the maneuverability, but the F4F4 has a max speed of 318, so 11 miles an hour slower, and it's slightly less maneuverable. Um, so you might be wondering, you know, why is this an upgrade? Well, it's because you get so many more a month, and I guess it also simulates, um, you know, the folding wings, being able to fit more of them on a carrier or something, I don't know. Um, the other, the non-simulated aspects of, uh, of the difference between the two models. Uh, another interesting thing about upgrades is, um, early on, at least for the Allies, Upgrades for some of the West Coast air groups are actually downgrades, so you might be upgrading from a Wildcat to a Buffalo. And what that'll do once you upgrade is it sends all of your old um, old planes back to the back to the aircraft pool. So, you know, if you have a squadron of 18 Wildcats, they upgrade to Buffaloes, uh, but they're sitting on the West Coast. That sends those Wildcats out to the pool, and they can be picked up by, you know, your actual carrier squadrons if they need replacements. Um, groups will upgrade automatically uh, once you get enough planes in the pool, but generally what I like to do is upgrade frontline groups, you know, early by hand. So, this is B-24-D-1. You know, it's got a squadron size of 12, but there's only 5 B-24Js in the, in the pool. So I'll hit upgrade now, and that means um, that'll let me kind of pick up the replacements um, before, you know, maybe one of my West Coast groups gets upgraded automatically for me. Um, okay, so I'm going to scroll my outline down a little bit, and actually um, looks like I'm coming up on my time limit pretty soon. So I'll talk about options for options for your planes, uh, a little bit more about headquarters units, how training works, and uh, how to move air groups in a subsequent video. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. I'll try and address them as best I can. If I said anything completely wrong, please, for the benefit of anybody else watching, uh, correct me. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned.